to MTP number 20. Number 20. The second one in green screen, and they're looking good, and we're going to continue to improve upon it. So we're going to enter into the realm that is politically uh, difficult, uh, in, you know, even in the medical side of things. Um, it, I don't want to talk about childhood circumcision because it, you know, I've gone through ups and downs and you know, what I suggest to my friends and some of my friends are still angry at me for whatever suggestion I made way back when. So I, we're going to focus on adult circumcision because uh, Jonathan from uh, somewhere in Central Florida, uh, I believe Central Florida, he asked, can I get a circumcision at the time of a penile implantation? So, let's talk about a circumcision. Um, you know, what are the benefits uh, the, the, in a, a adults? At least we're going to only speak about adults. And we, the, some of the benefits are uh, decreased urinary tract infections, decreased STDs, uh, it, it, believe it or not, a decreased incidence of uh, penile and uh, cervical cancer, which is very important. There's a reason why the Gates Foundation is funding circumcision projects all around the world, because there are some positive health benefits, at least in, in adults. So, uh, you know, adults who get consent to have their foreskin removed. Um, there's also some papers that talk about uh, the, uh, the decreased incidence of prostate cancer. Uh, you know, one of my friends, um, Aaron Spitz, wrote uh, the penis book, and I'm going to give him a plug here, because he, he has a very well-rounded look at uh, circumcision, as well as you know, a bunch of other topics. Um, and it's, you know, without any bias, and it, you know, it, doesn't, it just helps you to make a decision for yourself. So I'm kind of running away from the childhood one, and even though i got kids coming, I got a boy coming, and so I, I got to figure out what I'm going to do with that boy. Uh, so let's talk about the implant patient. You have uh, penile implant patients who are able to retract the foreskin and uh, able to clean it, and they're they don't they're not vasculopaths, meaning they don't have uh, high blood pressure, uh, the diabetes, they're not heavy smokers, and they got good blood flow to the penis. Those guys are great candidates for circumcision if they want it at the time of the procedure. Um, Let's say uh, you can't pull it back and you have all this infectious material underneath, and that's one the, the, the above listed uh, risks associated with not circumcising uh, occur. Uh, they should probably have their circumcision before they get the penile implant out, and usually we schedule it six weeks apart, maybe four weeks apart. The, 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 the jury is still out on the patients where their vascular passing up. Let's go back. Diabetics, smokers, uh, the, the people with just bad peripheral vascular systems, um, who yeah, it, it, you you can pull it back. Can you do the, a circumcision at the time of the procedure? <laughs> One of my very good friends is in the process of publishing because I know because I reviewed it an article on uh, uh, glandular necrosis, meaning the head gets the, 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 the lack of blood supply to it, the head of the penis. And uh, the jury is still out on those patients. If it were me, I would probably stage my circumcision and uh, get it a little bit later if I was a vasculopath. So I think I answered all of them, even though the jury is still out on the final case, which is a guy going for an implant who's a vasculopath who can pull back his foreskin. So I hope I, Jonathan, I answered your question, and we'll see you next week. Have a good one.